spice bush is a native shrub to the forest. It's one of our most common shrubs. Please smell the leaves. Sorry, I'm taking your leaf. Um, they're male, did I say they're male and female plants? They're male and female plants. <laughs> so, um, spice bush has a lot of different uses. Insect repellent, spread it on, repel those bugs. There's lots of them. This year is very good here. It can also be used as a primitive toothbrush. So you can clip it, you can fray the end, and you can clean your teeth your survival toothbrush. You can make a tea out of the leaves or stems. It's very powerful. If anybody really likes any of the aromas of these plants, feel free if um, when I'm passing around the samples, just take a chunk of sample. It also has red fruits about this size with a large seed. You can use the fruits as a spice, as an allspice substitute. I like to dry the fruit before I use it. It has a very high lipid content, so a very high fat content. Content It spoils, so it's something that you want to refrigerate or freeze once you harvest and dry it. And you want to dry it quick because of that high fat content. You can use it, again, like allspice, so as you would that, or I've made spice bush ice cream, basically vanilla ice cream, and added some dried spice bush. Super tasty. It has a lot of antimicrobial properties. And it is the host of the spice bush swallowtail butterfly, named for the plant, which is a very pretty butterfly. It's also one of the very first plants to bloom in the spring, so it's great for pollinators. And that high fat content makes it a really great fruit for migrating birds. Much better than something with a high sugar content. It's like basically like, you know, uh, do you want to fly all the way to Mexico with a Hershey's bar or something with high protein, high protein. So that spice bush has it. It's a very large shrub. You can definitely prune it for a larger area. Who else wants to ah. kind of work on our shrubs here? I didn't have any of these at the nursery, so I just Smell this one. This is also really nice and aromatic. Anybody recognize this plant? Bayberry. Bayberry, Mirica. It's a plant of the back dunes of the coast. Let's see. It's a coast. So it's kind of a little bit salt tolerant, which is a nice thing. And it can also grow in clay soil that's moist. Definitely sun, could take a little touch of shade. It's what bay candles were made from. What we use it for is basically a substitute for culinary bay, which is a Eurasian plant, Asian plant. So this is our very own local bay. You can also, if you wanted to, if anybody makes smudges, bayberry, B-A-Y, berry. If anybody wants me to repeat a name or give give the scientific name, I'm happy to give both. So if you are gardening in a place where you need a buffer because you get regular applications of salt during the winter, that's a nice one to put down because it could tolerate that. It looks evergreen, but it will drop its leaves. So if anybody, you know, if, again, if you want to take this home and try it, use it just like Culinary Bay, toss it in soups, pickles, whatever. You don't uh, necessarily eat it. It's a 
a seasoning that you would remove. You can also make tea out of it. You roast the leaves, dry the leaves. Really very, very tasty. pharmacy in a bottle. It's basically an extraction of this plant, which is a shade-loving plant of well-drained forests, so rocky forests, moist, but again, well-drained. So what do I mean? I mean the soil doesn't dry out, but the soil also doesn't retain water. Beautiful arcane plant. Flowers are super pretty. It's yellow. Very late bloomer, so really nice for pollinators. Blooms like October, November. And the way we use it, because we don't have a way to distill parts of this plant, we simply take the stems of a mature plant that we're pruning back and we put them in vodka and we let them let the vodka extract the properties of this plant. It's astringent so if you have ever had a cup of black tea that you let sit on the counter for too long and you drink it and you get that dry feeling in your mouth, that is astringency. That is the toning of tissues. So this plant tones tissues. So it can be used for bracing the skin after shaving. It can be used, you know, as a, you know, for beauty. I, I don't, I personally don't really groom. Um, I don't spend lots of time grooming. But. I also use the extraction that we make in vodka. So we take the stems, I'll explain a little bit more. Take the stems, chop them up, put them in a clean glass jar, put vodka over the top, let it six, six to eight weeks in a shady, cool, dry place with a lid on. And the vodka will go from being clear to being dark brown that you cannot even see through it. And so it's a really nice astringent. The biggie thing that I use it for, and I used it for earlier today, poison ivy. Um, so when I have the rash and it's broken out, I will take that extraction and vodka and rub it on poison ivy to dry it out. It works really, really nicely. I find personally that the stuff that we make at home is more potent than the stuff that you can get in the pharmacy. I like it better. I also think it's less harsh than the stuff at the store. So witch hazel, North American plant. Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding so, so many, many different mentality today. It, 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 it seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Else is a challenge. Um, um, so so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built for this. 